Great, everyone. It's nice to see you all. I'm here today with Adam Berlin and Jeffrey Hyman, editors of J Journal. Welcome, guys. Great to see you. Good to see you, Becky. <laughs> um, and as always, for people tuning in, you can um, go ahead and type your questions into the chat, or you can even put up a hand. And if you want to ask your questions, I can call on you. We can do things that way. Um, Thank so you. I'm, I'm just going to say one thing. Sure. I'm on a phone. I'm really not going to be able to see the chat unless I up and down the picture on the phone. So oh yeah, no a... worries. You you don't yeah. have to worry about the chat. I'll I'll monitor and and pull the questions from there. So don't even worry about that. Okay. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to meet you guys and learn about this magazine because I was just looking at this site and I see that J Journal started just about the time that I started the review review in 2008. So I feel like, and I, I remember corresponding with you guys back then and we reviewed a couple of issues of J Journal. So I feel like we've sort of <laughs> come right. through. 2008. It was mm. a very good year. <laughs> That's great. Um, so why don't we jump in right there and um, you can tell us about the launch of the magazine, why you started it, what what compelled you to start a magazine and a magazine with this particular focus. Sure. Jeff, you want to jump in? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, you know that we're both in the English department at John Jay College behind the colon is uh, the, of criminal, John Jay College of Criminal Justice. <laughs> And we're in the English department. We are both writers and we wanted to do something, um, you know, both to sort of, I don't know, engage ourselves in the process and do something that would bring, um, do some good for the school. And um, so that, you know, what seemed logical to us and it, and, and it seemed logical without any research or any sense of, you know, how, what the, what the, how, how um, lit mags are themed around the country, but to, build ours around questions of justice seemed um, the right way to go. And, and we saw pretty early on that there, well, there really aren't that many themed journals um, and ours is, is loosely themed and we can talk about that, um, but it is unique. You know, it is, I think, likely still the only one in the country that is that has its its uh, justice banner flying over the mm -hmm. over the over the gateway, right? Um, and our, our our tagline almost is that we're we're looking for justice related work, but really the more we edit the journal, the more tangential the pieces become. Mm -hmm. I think the better the pieces become, and so I think you could find the work, you know, the short stories, creative nonfiction poetry in any literary journal, but under the justice banner, reading the pieces together, mm -hmm. there's sort of a thematic through line that connects everything. So it has that 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 unique quality. Um, and that's what we were looking for. At the beginning, we thought we we're going to get a bunch of, you know, genre cops. pieces. We didn't want a lot of cops writing, a lot of inmates writing. We do publish um, inmate writers quite often. But the more we work on this, the more we, our aesthetic is going towards that tangential connection to uh, to justice. So that's where we stand now. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you're both writers and you're in the English department. Do you also have backgrounds in law or police no. work or anything? Or was this just purely no. a way kind of connected to the, the cause? No. Our only connection to police work is we live in New York City. So <laughs> that's, yeah. that's exactly um, it. No, we're both we're both English people and writers, mm -hmm. and uh, we teach creative writing at John Jay College. And okay. uh, you know, they're they're they they have a, a justice focus, but it's also a liberal arts school with an English major, creative writing minor. So that's why we were um, hired. And very fortunate to have a creating creative writing job in in the city, which mm -hmm. is tough. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how is the journal connected to the school? Is it the school is undergrad? It's a liberal arts college. It's yep. not undergrad. Okay, yeah. It's, 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 actually, it's, they, they it's, have they have some graduate programs. Go on, Jeff. Okay. No, no, that's it. it. It's undergrad and graduate, but it's all the graduate is exclusively justice focused. Got and it. the school yeah. itself, you know, I mean, if it, it, it's I don't know how commonly known it is. It's not a very old school, and it was mm -hmm. um it was um you know, it's sort of brought into being in the mid 60s with a very kind of liberalizing, humanizing motive. And really it was directed at New York City police. And, you know, as people have re 
spoken to us, to me about this. When the college came in, really, it was about humanizing the cops and, and you know, what, what better thing to do? I, and it has, you know, it has attracted people who've been very sort of interested in John Jay's mission and stayed very loyal to it over the 60 something years of its mm -hmm. of its life. Sure. Um, so does um, does the magazine have a connection to the students? Do you use uh, student readers as a part of a course or is it just something that you no. know? We, we made a decision early on that we would not allow any John Jay writers. And mm -hmm. we've we've published, I think, two students over our, you know, 15 years. Um, and that was after they had graduated so that there was no bias and no connection in the uh, in the submission process. But we're I mean, I use the word tangential. We're connected to the school, but it feels like we're tangentially connected to the school. So Jeff and I are given uh, some course release time to work on the journal. Um, we, not to bad mouth, but just to be honest about it, we um, we were hoping that the journal would be used as sort of an emblem of the college. We think it's just a great resource. And the first president who who sort of started the journal with us and was really gung ho about it um, had that connection to the journal. The administration has changed. I think the liberal arts focus has changed at John Jay, and so we feel we're we're kind of not just kind of we're very independent, um, mm -hmm. but we are staying with the school, and they they do support us um, a bit. Yeah, I'm I'm just going to jump in with one more thing, and um, we don't take we don't invite submissions from people at the college in part because we don't want to, we, we, we don't want the, 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 the sense of whatever disappointment or competition or a feeling about the journal to circulate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's in part because we will take like other journals, you know, 2% of the submissions that we get 3% at times, you know, and there are days when we work, since COVID, we've done everything. I mean, we live a couple of blocks from each other, but we've done everything, mm -hmm. every bit of journal editing on the phone. We don't even Zoom. We just, you know, we, we talk and we read independently and we talk about what we've got. Um, but, um, you know, there are times, there are times in the, on an editing day when we will hit or, or two or three pieces, beautiful pieces will hit us in a row and we will surprise ourselves, you know, with three acceptances in an afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then we will go, you know, like everybody else in the editing world, days and days and days without, with of disappointment, you know, of, of of gratitude for the submissions, but you know, unable to find a place for mm -hmm. for the majority of pieces in the journal. And it's there's not there's nothing exclusive about this. We just you know there's the there's the justice theme, and and really for us, I mean, the justice theme is it. Um, that we want the sentences. We want we want to, we want the good writing. Yeah. Right. I um, mean to go even to go back to your question about John Jay's connection to the journal. I mean, these days are tough. I mean, the whole uh Gettysburg Review controversy, where right, the 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 college is basically letting go this this super established um journal. It maybe is just the state of uh of literary journals today. Mm -hmm. Um and I know you personally have called out the other state, the scam part, and congratulations <laughs> to Becky on that. I mean, yeah. I think that's really, really important that 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 people are collecting money for, yeah. you know, nothing. So I'm, uh, that's kudos to you on that. Thanks. We yeah, it does seem, I think you're exactly right. It does seem like more universities are sort of uh, dispensing with their liberal arts programs and sort of treating lit mags as kind of extra and superfluous and not not using them to the full advantage that the university exactly has. exactly yeah. dispensable yep that's sad um so take us through your editorial process what happens it sounds like from what you're saying a piece all the pieces go right to you is that correct and uh you read it discuss it and what happens yeah, I mean, we chose not to be unsubmittable. We have a mm -hmm. Gmail address, so it goes straight to us. We don't charge a reading fee or anything like that. And we 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 go through the the roster of submissions. And um, when we started, we were sitting next to each other in the office. We would read together, um, you know, poetry. We would re we'd read out loud. Fiction, we could tell in a page and a half if the 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 sentences were the sentences that we admired. 
And uh, and if we both admired it, then we would take it, take the story home, read it separately, and and come back and and discuss it. And and the great joy of this journal is really working with Jeff and the two of us just have these great conversations about what makes a piece work and what maybe needs to be edited in a piece. And we are very much hands-on editors. I mean, we're writers too, so we submit and, and usually, you know, you get an acceptance or a rejection and the acceptance says pretty much good to go. We'll cross this T and dot this I and that's it. Jeff and I really, when, when we accept a piece and we feel it needs some work, we provide extensive comments to the writer and have a back and forth sometimes two or three times. So the joy of the journal, you know, forget the support and forget the the numbers. It really is the editing process that we uh, that we enjoy and, and take, take pride in. I think the writers um, that we have published would, you know, confirm how much they... I think they value the, the the editorial process and the editorial feedback. We just want the pieces to be the best versions that they can they can be, yeah. which is what we do with features too. Yeah, I, I should just point out one more thing, and that is um, that you know when we work and either sitting by side by side or on the phone, you know if we get a piece, if we if we're interested in the story but not sure why we're interested in the story or what it is that grabs us or if it grabs one and not quite the other. We will often spend a half a day, a half and a half of a day of editing uh, on a story to, you know, to find the to to to, to could speak of the virtue of of one piece or or why a piece doesn't work to the other, and it's it is a back and forth, and 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 sort of story deepening discussion that we'll have and, and by the end we will be either committed to it and ready to work with a writer or you know even after an hour and a half or two hours of talk we'll we'll often say it's just not going to work mm -hmm. for us so that i mean that th this isn't because we are we 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 feel obliged to this it's the the pleasure in the in the talk and it, it mm -hmm. deepens our own experience and, mm -hmm. that's great so. yeah can you just cover uh, brass text for a moment? So when are you open for submissions? Uh, what type of submissions do you accept? And how many submissions per issue? Uh, how many pieces per issue? Yeah, brass, brass tax, we, we're open year round for submissions. Um, we publish short stories, poetry, and creative nonfiction that should be as, as personal as possible. That's where our tastes go. Um, and what was the, what was the third part of that question, Becky? Um, the, how many pieces per issue? Do uh, around, Jeff, you know, we've moved from, from paper to complete. So this used to be the journal for mm -hmm. about 18 years. We published a hard copy. Now, financially, it just doesn't make sense. So we have a website. Um, we think it's a beautiful website and we publish about 20 writers per issue and the, and J journal comes out twice a year. So about 40 writers per year. Okay, great. And um, oh, we have a question. Uh, what types of poems are you drawn to? Mm -hmm. Leave that to you. <laughs> you can leave that to me. And uh, I, I imagine, uh, you know, feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question if you want, because I'm curious if you mean um, like stylus, what free verse versus, you know, I mean, I mean you, you usually, want. usually okay. the poems are free verse. We mm -hmm. sometimes publish a closed form poem. Um, and we're just looking for those, you know, I guess the gut, the gut punch work. Um, I, I, I think Jeff and Jeff would agree. I think we, we go more towards the visceral than the cerebral. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that would be our taste and really across the board with the creative writing. Okay. I should say that we don't um, we don't invite genre fiction. We have come close to publishing some sort of cop dramas in a couple of instances, and they've been great. They've really been more character driven than, you know, than 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 plot imposed. Um, and we have published probably as many prison writers as we have issues. Probably more. In some issues, we've got two. Um, and you know we ask that, that we ask of, of of submissions from prisons that they we hold those to the same pretty much the same standards as everything else mm -hmm. that we publish. So it's um, 
you know, we we want this. We want the work that is going to evoke by itself, or, or when it passes under the, the sort of justice banner, questions about ethics and 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 being in the world in a way that you know that wouldn't preclude these pieces from being in any other journal anywhere, mm-hmm. any top journal anywhere. There, there, it's all good writing. But once, and we still find this fifteen years later when we look over the work that we're about to print or or upload um that it achieves a kind of you know kind of justicey ethics resonance once it passes um you know on through that magical threshold mm-hmm. right. <clears throat> yeah and you mentioned uh cop stories at the beginning and i'm curious do you see what are what are things that you see a lot of that people should know they're just not it's just not what you're looking for like i imagine you probably see a lot of detective stories yeah, like, detective when the first line is about a jury and a court case, room, and room. it's you know very procedural and it feels mm-hmm. like it's taken out mm-hmm. of a tv script you know you can you can catch that in a couple of lines and so mm-hmm. that's not what we want i think the police stories we've published have been deeply personal deeply fresh, uh, a sort of a different take on things, you know, in in line with our tangential Mm -hmm. um, approach. Yeah. And how do you handle, um, I imagine, which, which I think is great. And I agree with you about themed lit mags. I love your magazine's theme and I love that it is a themed lit mag. And what I especially like about it is that I imagine you get submissions from a much wider swath of the population. So you're not seeing people who have necessarily PhDs in creative writing, MFAs in creative Mm. writing. So how do you handle submissions that are sort of more raw in terms of the way that they're written that may have a great story to tell, but the it's not necessarily as polished as you might see from like the more credentialed submissions? Or am that's I wrong? A, <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a it's a great question. Assumption. We um, we hit yeah. that. Sorry. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm curious because I imagine you see so many just heart wrenching stories, you know, and not necessarily they may they may just be more raw in terms of the the craft. So I'm curious how you balance that. It's tough, mm-hmm. um, and I mean it happens so often that we reach the point where we say well this is this is a weighty story and one that needs to be told but it just it, it it's you know the the writer isn't in control of the language there are just too many errors i mean in some instances if we feel a piece is borderline we will edit for the writer we've done that plenty of times to bring the, the the sentences to you know to whatever it is to to file the dross off the sentences or to mm-hmm. correct the punctuation but there's there are i mean it's it, any editor would know this that you know the story itself um it, it needs to be carried by the language and not be lost in the language not fall out through the gaps in the sentences mm-hmm. so we have to let go of a lot of stuff that we feel is admirable and and often I don't know, this doesn't respond directly, but there are times when we cannot accept a piece in part because the story feels incomplete or the language is quite up to it. But um, we'll write to a, a, a submitter and say, this is, you know, this is really on the way. This is what we liked. Mm-hmm. We'd be happy to read another piece. And that, and we, we have a lot of turnaround that way. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, you know, a couple of years later, sometimes these raw writers right. have, kind of worked on their craft and they'll send something we'll say aha mm. that you know it has the guts of the last story but it also has the the mm. line the sentences that we're looking for and when that happens that's that's great yeah has the magazine changed am i wrong in thinking that it was originally criminal justice focused and then it's sort of broadened or do i have that wrong you no know, i mean john jay college their 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 colon is criminal justice, right? Okay. John Jay College of Criminal Justice. We all wanted it broader of justice writing. Um, yeah, so it's, it's. I, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> over the years, um, the criminal part has become a little bit less present in the journal. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think we, I'm yeah. sorry that I pulled myself off the screen because I'm looking through a stack of books to find the first issue. And um, you you wouldn't be wrong to say that we had a kind of imagination about the world of writing we were going to pull from or would be attracted to us. 
And I, I was looking for a couple of sentences in the editor's note for the first issue. Maybe if it's in hands, arm's reach for you, Adam, you could find it. But it's not. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, yeah, you know, we we wanted cops, and we were thinking that that I mean, certainly cops think they experience, they write, they you know, they're 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 right there at the at the at the the Ouija photographing distance from mm-hmm. you know from from events. Um, and we thought we were going to get this sort of wonderfully jaded world, street weary reflection on 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 cop and legal and street life. Mm-hmm. Um, none of that happened, hmm. and we we started to get. And so we we understood early on that what we had imagined, and it was an imagination based on imagination, not on anything we had read, not on submissions, right. not on a sense of how theme a theme journal would draw into its theme. And we understood pretty soon, maybe hit the, you know, putting the first issue together, that the pool was going to be a lot wider. And we were happy about that. I mean, we were surprised at our own recognition that the justice issue could be very tangential and 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 in in that way you know sort of even broader than we'd we'd um we'd imagined so what makes a good piece of writing about justice <laughs> i know that's kind of a broad question but um it sounds like from what you're saying you're not seeking work that is very on the nose like that has something right. to mm-hmm. kind of teach the reader Mm -hmm. you're seeking work that explores an idea that is nuanced that doesn't necessarily come to conclusions for the reader um is that in line with what you're after and absolutely you you just said it yeah it's those gray areas that to Mm -hmm. us are much more interesting um not too much ambiguity necessarily but a, a a take a moral take a justice take but as you said not on the nose um and I think that's probably true with all great creative mm-hmm. writers. Um, I think it's the theme is there, but it's it's nuanced and it's not mm-hmm. the moral to the story is. So that's um, that's what we're looking for. That's what makes a good story, and and that's what makes for us a good justice story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and what makes something literary, and as opposed, I mean, how how do you know you're reading a piece of literature? Is is uh, you know, is is if 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 you go to the dentist and the dentist hands you a pamphlet that, that called "How to Keep Your Teeth in Your Mouth," is that a piece of literature? Well, I mean, it may turn out to be, but you know, you 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 think that in some way it's it's uh, it has to create thought in one direction or another, either sort of inward about the course and quality of one's own life, and or outward about you know the the social psychological realities of of living, and 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 that's. I, mean, I don't know if that's the that's the sort of first criteria we use to think about how appropriate a piece is, but it's there for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you um, do either of you feel like your own ideas about justice or how people think about justice have <laughs> evolved over the course of just reading so many submissions and seeing? what so many people are thinking about, like what's, you know, part of the zeitgeist and- That's a great question. You know, we get a lot of pieces that are very topical on justice issues. So every time there's a news event, we get a a lot of submissions there. And I'm not sure if that's changed over the years. I feel that we're getting more and more topical submissions now. And usually we just reject those because they don't feel timeless and they feel like they were I don't know, maybe written too quickly or not, not, I, I feel like that you need some time and some marination to sometimes talk about a topical issue when it, when it becomes less topical. So I would say we've seen more of those, wouldn't you agree, Jeff, more, mm-hmm. more topical mm-hmm. pieces. Um, mm-hmm. Especially in, in, in the three years of COVID and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and political dissolution around the country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what should writers know if they are writing about topic? Because I know, I'm sure you don't want to tell writers, like, don't write about topical issues, but how does a writer sort of get to that transcendent place where they're not just writing about 
something that's happening on the news right now and responding to it immediately, but they're actually kind of digesting the material. And do you, do you have any sort of advice for writers from what you've seen in submissions for like what tends to work in a in a piece of literature? I mean, the less <laughs> instructive, maybe the better. I, I, I mean, we're talking about on the nose. Uh, many of the topical pieces are just like a, you know, a diatribe or a, yeah. you know, and so that just immediately um, turns us off, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. did, did you use the word instructive, Adam? Did you yeah. say that? Yeah. yeah, I think that's it. I mean, there's sometimes we look at each other and say didactic, this piece yeah. is. And, you know, I mean, that, that would be an issue in, in, in any literary context. You know, you don't want to be in, you don't want to be edited yourself as a as a reader and an experiencer. So mm -hmm. I, I think that that's that is a thing for us. Yeah. Right. It's it's hard to know though, you know what, what how to how to prescribe in this instance, um, you know what the, sorry about this story, but you know that what when when the when you listen when Joyce's Ulysses came before a judge in the U.S. he said I don't I can't define pornography but I know it when I see it, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we don't publish pornography, but um, we. Um, but it's, a, it's such a challenging and stimulating question. You know, how do, how do you know when something is going to fit? How do you know when right. something is going to resonate with a justice -y question? And and it's just impossible to answer until we read that piece. Right. Sure. And, it's, and it's so subjective because sometimes we'll, uh, a writer will tell us they have something accepted somewhere else and it will be a poem that we would never, let's say, right. take it because it is so there, it is so direct. So there are mm -hmm. literary journals who are, who are publishing this but again subjective and our tastes just don't go that don't yeah. go that do you ever encounter work that is beautifully rendered everything works but it comes to a conclusion or it has a kind of underlying message that you're in disagreement with is that ever an issue take it away jeff <laughs> I, I should say that it, it, it happens more often that it, that a piece may be beautifully rendered, but comes to no conclusion oh. or an inconclusion. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that's and and we're too and much. We're too much of a conclusion. Oh, yeah. you know, that's what, they yeah. cut that last paragraph and a half where you've gone into expl explanation mode and you haven't let the story right. really work. So that's a great one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it happens so often that, mm -hmm. that that we more often Adam sees where a piece should end. And it's a page and a half or a line and a half before the end. We propose it to the writer and they ding back immediately. Mm -hmm. with a, you know, this is you're making a lot of sense in part. I mean, people want to get published. So they right. You know, they they accept, and we right. hope it's not it's not totally mercenary that way. Yeah, but. it's not a power play, but no, right. not from us. I think usually uh, it's it's um, I think it's the it's the right edit oftentimes. Yeah, can you give examples either from a recent issue or just some works that you've been unable to let go of that just stand out in your mind that are this is exactly what you're looking for. This is why you are doing this magazine. This is just like the essence of what your magazine is all about. You know, we, um, we we're gonna start sorry. doing this. Go on, Jeff. No, no, I'm just gonna look at the ish the last sure. issue. We're gonna start sending out, you know, we're trying to create a bigger internet presence. So we're asking people to follow us on Twitter. I mean we were a a, a hard copy journal, so we weren't even thinking in those terms, so we feel mm -hmm. like we're a little bit behind, but we're gonna start uh, sending out pieces from our archives called One at a Time. And so the first piece that we're sending out is about just a very simple story about four people driving in the Italian Alps and two of them are tourists. And it's just tension is building in the car and tension is building in the traffic. You know, one of my favorite definitions of a good story, I tell this to my students, is where, you know, almost nothing happens, but kind of everything happens. And it's just a drive, it's talk, it's perceptions, and it's people getting on each other's nerves and sort of questioning each other's cultures, which starts to bring in some justice issues. And it, for us, that was just a, a great story to open with, with these um, one at a time pieces from our archives. So, so yeah. that that's a great that's a very interesting story. So how would that story have what was the justice component in that story? 
it was it was two cultures kind of clashing mm -hmm. and, and it was really about power plays and just i guess it really and it's also a couple sort of questioning each other and just the injustice of thinking you're with somebody but you're not really with somebody and so stuck in this car it sort of accelerated all of these all of these realizations um that was the essential connection the genius of the story is a literary genius you take a bunch of people and you stick them in a small place with a closed door and this is a fiat you know there's there's barely mm -hmm. enough room for two and they had four people in there um and you know and, and relationships boil at that point and 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 then the, you know the, the question of how how the justice issue gets described is completely up to the reader but it's unmistakable that there is one there that's can I, can so, I jump? yeah no you go ahead jump. well I, it's just so interesting because i still when i think of your magazine i this is it's really interesting to hear this because i do think of okay if i have a story that has anything to do with lawyers <laughs> or police um but it sounds like the, the the stories do not need at all to um have any connection to that like overtly. not overtly yeah. not overtly yeah. but 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 we don't turn them down on the basis right. of the mention of a lawyer certainly sure. it's just, if that turns if that moves more to character than mm -hmm. law then mm -hmm. we're interested. Mm -hmm. But it, you, you asked a little bit ago if we could speak about um, something, a story that stays with one. Uh, are you on your Are you on your computer at the moment, Becky? Uh, um, yeah, if, I, I can pull. If you, uh, I mean, I then I would just say to anybody who's listening or comes across the recording, if you look at the Spring Twenty Three issue, look mm -hmm. at the very first piece in the Spring Twenty Three issue. It's called Winter Fields by a writer whose name is Nika Mavrodi. Uh, um, is that the past issues? It's the current oh, issue. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. It should be past issue, but the fall issue is not up yet. So it's, <laughs> it's current issue. Okay. So let me um, look, look at the very first line. And I'm going to share my screen here so people okay. can see that. And uh, let's get this down here. Can you guys see this? Uh huh. Okay, this is the story Winter mm -hmm. Field. Today was still one of the wintry fields in my city, which may be a large one, even by the standards of New York. I think it's not much smaller than Los Angeles, but it doesn't mean. Mm. I'm, I maybe don't even need to go further than that because you just you know you 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 have you you have a kind of sentence energy that goes beyond the end of this one for sure. But she's in great control, right? And then the starting with because. Uh huh. Right. 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 It excited us from the first two lines. That's great. Mm. It's very helpful. So it sounds like you're also very interested in the voice. And yeah, we are completely interested in the voice. And, and you know, we, we've sort of been instructed by 15 years of reading to be interested in, in the risk taking. You know, mm -hmm. of course, there's it's it's got to be a risk in every word, but but there's a there's real risk taking and confidence and experimental experimentation mm -hmm. in this piece. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's the, the risk, of course, is that they flop. Um, this one didn't, surely didn't. Yeah, and it seems like we're publishing more and more flash pieces as well, which seems to be oh, the, right, uh, right. the way the right. writer goes. So this is a flash piece and uh, really focused on voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you right. talk more about what you tend to see a lot of in submissions? So you mentioned topical um, issues that people are responding to news stories. Is there anything that people can know like do you see a lot of bar brawl <laughs> stories or... no <laughs> i like a good bar brawl story but yeah there's this there's, there's <laughs> okay. there's okay. there's okay. i mean as you were saying you know when you first thought of j journal we do get a lot of stories that are police officers or right. some you know blatant crime or lawyer procedurals and so on and so forth and usually again it goes down to the the line level or the voice level they're just they feel like stock. And mm -hmm. so right away we we that's not what we want to uh right. 
want to publish. But there are, you have published stories where a lawyer is a central character mm -hmm. and is doing something that is that is different, but it's really the, the, the character drive, not the plot drive. Yeah. Um, what, what we, you asked what we get a lot of. Um, we, we get a lot of very new writers, mm -hmm. as every journal would, who are, um, uncertain about voice or what it means or how to control it mm. or how to let it go who are I'm, you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this only because I've come exactly this route who are occupied with their own cleverness mm -hmm. as new writers have to be you've got to find your way you've got to mm -hmm. parent yourself and it's not difficult to recognize that mm. And with the kind of compassion for the struggle <laughs> to really identify oneself as a writer and not as a, a, a clever constructor of phrases. Mm -hmm. um, and we, there is a lot of it. And, yeah. and, and it's great that you know, people, when Adam and I were coming up as, you know, we're old, I am, um, <laughs> You know, the, the magazine market had so shriveled, you know, I mean, our, our parents' generation, there would have been in twice as many options or our grandparents' generation. They're publishing stories everywhere. Mm -hmm. None of those play, none of those sort of glossies are around anymore. The the print journals, they, they there were plenty of them. But, you know, obviously the, the web is it's so proliferated and so many people feel invited to submit because there's so many options now. It's great. It is great. But it also means that we are taking, you know, one or two percent of the submissions that that we get. And I I don't want that to be too narrow a passage. It doesn't I, it shouldn't seem too narrow a passage. Mm -hmm. I don't think we are any tighter than than any other journal. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I mean, it's great up to a point. I think there's sometimes our literary journals that I, I don't know if, if the editors are ready to really edit a literary journal and and people are getting published and they have all these credits and, and maybe that's not such a good thing as well. I mean, there's a proliferation of MFA programs, mm -hmm. proliferation of anybody can start a journal um, online. So I think there is some watering down, and I don't mean to sound arrogant about that, but I think that's just a reality. And mm -hmm. it also puts up the wedge, which you're revealing, Becky, of journals that just don't have the right intentions. So it's a it's a strange time for for literary magazines, and there's no pay in it either, which is which is you know I think it, there's a real desperation out there. Um, you could survive as a short story writer way back when. Right now, you're you're paying a submittable fee for somebody to read your piece so you can put it on your resume. And I'm 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 even wondering how many writers really read literary journals except for the piece that they're in. So I think that's that's the honest truth of the state of literary magazines, as you know better than we do, because that's <laughs> what you're you're looking at. The whole yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a sad yeah. state of affairs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we're hopeful. We're hopeful. Uh, so hopeful. Yeah. So, <laughs> Gently. Yeah. <laughs> what um are there is there anything you want to see more of in submissions? Like you feel like for some reason you're just not getting stories uh from abroad or stories, you know, with animals in them or you know whatever it is i think we, we like a, a good cross section i mean we <laughs> we get submissions from everywhere and um i don't know if there's a specific niche that we have to fill i think it's just it's just the good writing according to the two of us which again is very subjective so it's hard to it's hard to say where we you know there's a slot that still needs to be filled i feel like every issue the slots are filled with yeah you know, intriguing pieces. Mm -hmm. We we've published people from I don't know, and this is a stab at it, but probably a dozen countries outside the U.S. And we're interested. We want that. Mm -hmm. And if you know, if this goes beyond the borders of the U.S., we're inviting. Yeah. 
Can you talk a little bit about your outreach and your readership? I imagine that you have the yeah, opportunity I'm... to reach beyond, uh, you know, we're talking about how few people read lit mags, but I think your lit mag would be positioned very well to actually reach audiences. Um, and I'm curious if you do any um, like distribution in schools or prisons or any anything like that. Could I, Becky, could I just respond to Colette's question, oh, sure. um, which you probably just saw. Did you see that? Um, About prizes, yeah. Yeah, um, we do. Every year we send off six entries to the push cart. And one year we did have a push cart winner whom we published. We send to the O. Henry prizes. And um, I don't know, you know, a handful of smaller prizes that we've sent to over the years. There are a couple of prizes and, for first time writers that we've sent to. So if we see right. something that is applicable, but yeah, we always submit to the Pushcart Prize, Henry Prize, and we've got, as Jeff said, we've got a Pushcart win and a, some a bunch of mentions. So yeah, right. yeah. Sorry, Becky. I, uh, no, I, no, 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 no. Oh, oh out, with with outreach. Listen, that's it. Right. I wish the two of us were better marketers. I mean, that's why you know. We're dunces. We want them to follow us on Twitter. We've reached out to the marketing people at John Jay because we're under an institution. We thought that they could help us and they are, you know, busy, inundated with work, busy. Right. So, so we, you know, we really are two guys in an office doing this and the editing is what we're interested in and putting out what we think is a, a really great journal. Um, but we have to learn more about um, marketing. We have to do a better job. Um, I'm hoping that our Twitter following, J Journal NYC, that's our Twitter handle, you know, gets more followers. And then we can start, you know, we'll send out some content and hopefully that will get the get the ball rolling. Um, it's it's tough because we're just two people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think. That's fair. Uh, I'm personally glad to see that the magazine is now online, that you made that transition, because it just makes, for from a writer's point of view, I think it just sure. makes it so much easier to share work and to grow mm. the leadership. So we, I, we I think agree. We agree. So we're hoping, you know, we're getting more and more hits on the journal, and hopefully that will increase to the point where it gets the the name we think it, it deserves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you have any... Um, like advice. So if there are writers that are watching this, listening to this, and they're thinking, this is great. This sounds like a perfect magazine for my work. Do you have any advice for like a final pass through their submission before they send it mm. to you? Like, um, you know, like what you were saying, like most writers say too much at the end. So make sure your end is sort of left kind of open or whatever it is, maybe, you know, start more dramatically or I don't know, I'll let you. Answer. Yeah, I think those, those are great pieces of advice. Jeff and, I, Jeff and I always throw around the Philip Roth quote, you know, you write a sentence, you turn it around, you turn it around again, you throw it away, you turn it around again. So we're really looking for those, <laughs> those mm -hmm. turned around lines, those carefully written lines without, um, without seeing the writer pulling the strings, the writer at work. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, Dave Gustavus concerning taste, but, but we, we, we want to see uh, strong lines, strong mm -hmm. lines, mm -hmm. and you know, wash it out of all those easy phrases and cliches that just don't say anything. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I'm completely with you, Adam, on everything. We've, we've, we've been through this for 15 years. I, I, um, you know, I, I, I tell my students that um, nothing is done without an editor. And that doesn't have to be us, um, but um, you know we we want to see that a piece has been carefully edited. And we recognize that you know something that comes off out, out flaming out of the imagination, I, you know, in 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 one in a hundred instances that's going to be done, but generally not. And um, you know it's 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 five, eight, ten passes at a piece before it's ready to move off the table. So that's what we're hoping. That's just to, to, to jump on the Adam's back on this. We really are hoping for carefully edited work that's thoughtful and in control. Yeah, and we've been doing this long enough where I think we both feel you can read a piece and almost see through it and see the writer at work. And you don't want to see the writer working, but you can see the work that went into the manuscript. And um, 
I think we get more and more experienced each year with 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 our editing, and uh, I think we can identify the work that that is going to touch us. Yeah. So and yeah, turn a, turn the sentences around and draft and draft and draft, and you can you can tell when something has been really worked as opposed to something that two drafts, let's throw it out there and give it a shot. And if nothing happens, then I'll revise it a little more. Right. And then, right? I think yeah. that's something we're aware of. Yeah. Um, do you have any opportunities for volunteer readers? It sounds like it's you two doing the bulk of the work and I imagine you want to keep it that way, but are there, if somebody wanted to get involved with the magazine, is there any opportunity there? We have, um, taken on student readers probably a half dozen over the years i mean students four years seems an eternity to a student but it's very it's by the time they get to us they're in their last semester so it's a couple of months of reading and in some instances we had them in the office when we were back in the office and we three you know we we talk around it, it was really instructive for us and for the students you know to be in that kind of hard focused editing environment um, uh, I don't know how we would respond to that now because anybody who might you know, contact us about this, we'd have to, we, we wouldn't know, they wouldn't be students of ours. Um, I, I think that we are interested in, to the extent that we can do this, we're interested in bringing people on along, you know, as, as, as a route that they want to go. Um, we would, love days a, are... we would love a social media person to help us. Right. I mean, we've had somebody and she's kind of disappeared a little bit. Um, actually, our web designer is leaving us after many years. Um, so we're going to find, we're going to have to find somebody else. So we're looking for, again, it really can't be much pay. I mean, we only get a bit of money from, from John Jay, but we are looking for maybe a couple of people who could help us, you know, generate a Twitter following or post some 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 content um and maybe take over the the design of the of the journal with editorial taste i think jeff and i are pretty in sync with things and when we're not as jeff said we have those great <laughs> discussions and and work you know one of us will influence the other whether we should take a piece or not um but it's the the readers we've had the student readers have been the stellar students in our classes who really have a great eye and they they ask us you know would this be something we could do? And we say, yeah, come aboard and we'll we'll talk through some stories and give them stories. So it's a, it's, it's a nice part of the process. It's kind of a mentoring um, part of what we do, I guess. But but our tastes really are in sync, I think. And there are tastes. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a few more questions. I'm interested, uh, something that comes up a lot with uh, Lit Mag news readers is the issue of age. I think people are concerned that a lot of lit mags and their content skew young, they're geared toward younger readers. And I was just thinking about the example of the story that you shared, that to me, um, it's such a strong voice and it also sort of sounds like a younger voice. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if that's something that you, do you tend to see a wide range of submissions in terms of um, the ages of people that are represented? <laughs> Um, and Definitely. is that something that you think about and welcome? We we welcome it, and we get submissions for across across every age. Yeah, we it part part possibly because you know the title of the journal is so staid, and justice is so nebulous. Right, and you right. know who who's <laughs> thinking about this? <laughs> I mean, and so everybody is at every age, but yeah. the word yeah. itself is you know it's either attracts or it or 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 it repels. Right. Um, but it's it's um yeah I, I it's a good and fair question I think we have writers from across the generational spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's great. So one final question. This is a question that I ask all editors, and I'm just curious what keeps you going. As we talked about, there, you know, there's a lot that editors are facing right now with funding and readership and all this. Um, we know it's a lot of work. We know you have other responsibilities of teaching, family, you know, the whole thing. Um, so what keeps you at it? <laughs> what keeps you editing this magazine and looking forward to the work each day? I think paramount it's our friendship. We've really developed a great friendship <laughs> over the years. You know, oftentimes friends don't meet that frequently unless they're working together. Yeah. And so 
we've sustained this 15 <laughs> years of a work relationship, a great friendship. Um, it gives us a chance to talk literature and talk art um, and edit at the same time. So I think that is what sustains us. And also we, we feel like we have a, a worthy journal, quality writers, really well edited. Um, and so we get pride every time a new issue um, goes up. But that, I, I think I can speak for you, Jeff, right? I think it's, it's, it's the two of us that are sustaining each other and we want this to run as long as, as it can. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm completely with you. Friendship, the working together, the kind of productive collaboration that it's been really keeps us going. Um, I, I think we both feel also that this is a little less defined, but that the journal is because of its context, it's housed at John Jay and its, its theme, its banner. It, it is a kind of social good. I don't know if that sounds grandiose, but we <laughs> want it to be a social good and a literary good. Mm -hmm. And and we recognize that, you know, the work is for posterity, really, because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, how, you know, what 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 material re re responses are, are going to come to people from their place in the journal. But, you know, it, it's 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 good for literature. And yeah. then there's for us, I think, I mean, Adam really hit this but the kind of exalting feeling of finding a writer you know and 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 being even at our point in life being expanded by a literary possibility it's wonderful still and it's, so great much. To, and it's great to see writers who we've taken and you know a couple of years later oh yeah write us a note and say i've got a book published and we'll put that up on our our website and the uh, yeah, there there's some writers who we've published several times just because we're we admire their work so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very lovely. <laughs> well, thank you <laughs> to both of you for taking the time today. So interesting, um, and thank you everyone for coming out. Thank you. Hey, great. Thank you so much, Becky.